And by summing, uh, you get that, that the, the whole thing, the whole difference is the rule of one. And that gives you your universality. So you, you just need to, to understand how the Sturgis transform changes if you make this one tiny perturbation. You just change one entry of your matrix. How does this affect the Sturgis transform? Okay. Um, and so this is, again, something that you can do with Taylor expansion. And uh, the reason why I focus on the Sturgis transform is that the Sturgis transform has a particularly simple Taylor expansion. See, the Sturgis transform of a matrix. Um, okay, so okay, so by by construction, what it is, it's one of an n times a trace of the resolvent of uh, one of a root n. M n. Uh, and so the resolvent of a matrix is defined with m minus the inverse. And it will, M is always going to be Hermitian, and Z will always have a positive ima imaginary pass. So this inverse is always more defined. So um, Sturgis transform is a trace of resolvent. Trace is linear. And resolvent has a very good Taylor expansion because uh, there's a single res resolvent identity. So it's a little algebra identity. I don't always forget exactly what it is. Uh, but yeah, if, you if you perturb a matrix by perturbation, you can always write that as um, the original uh, resolvent uh, minus uh, uh, resolvent of M. A resolvent M plus A. OK? This is basically just, just a, I mean, it's a, um, In the commutative case, it, it is this sort of basic identity, which is very easy to, 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 to check. And it, it turns out this, this identity doesn't even need um, anything to be, to be commutative. It works even for non-commutative elements. And so, it, uh, so th this identity is just an algebraic identity that you can check um, is true whenever M and A are, say, Hermitian and Z, and Z is this positive imaginary part. Um, and uh, OK, so this, so this expresses a perturbed resolvent in terms of the original resolvent times the perturbation times the perturbed resolvent. But uh, what you can do is that you can iterate this identity. Right? This, this perturbed resolvent, you, you already have a formula. And so you can, you can iterate this. And uh, you end up with the Neumann series. OK, so you have a perturbative expansion. So the, uh, the resolvent of a perturbation is just the original resolvent minus uh, original resolvent A, original resolvent, and then uh, plus resolvent A, resolvent A, resolvent, okay, and so on and so forth. Okay. So there's an expansion, which is, uh, no, I mean, it, 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 it generalizes the geometric series. OK. Um, OK. So, um, and then of course you can take traces of this. And now you can ex express the Stilter's transform of a, of a perturbed matrix by the Stilter's transform of the original matrix plus a bunch of other expressions that involve resolvents and, and perturbations. OK. So what do we have? We have the Stilter's transform of a base matrix plus a small perturbation. Okay. And the smallness is coming from this root n. Okay, so you're taking this normalized matrix and you're making this matrix perturbation small and, and rank two, very small perturbation. So um, this term here, you can just use, use this Neumann expansion and you can write it, uh, first of all, as, uh, as, as the, so you can, you can write it firstly as uh, still just transform of the base matrix plus the next term or minus the next term. Uh, which is something like 1 over n trace uh, resolvent times perturbation times resolvent again. Okay, and then uh, there's an, another term, so normalized trace uh, resolvent perturbation resolvent perturbation resolvent and so on and so forth. 
Oh, and crucially, there's also a, uh, uh, somewhere in here, there's a, there's a C, C or J, and then I can maybe get a CID squared here. Okay, and so on and so forth. All right, so you have this expansion. So basically, this term is supposed to be of size one. Um, this term will be of size one root n because of this one root n here. Um, and, uh, ah, okay, so, okay, yeah, so let me just assert that this expression is going to typically be bounded, or at least maybe only going by entry epsilon. Uh, this expression will turn out to be a size n minus one half plus epsilon because of, of, this, of this term here. The next term will be a size n minus one plus epsilon, and so on and so forth. Um, now, to actually prove this, okay, so, so uh, okay, to actually prove those bounds, you need to understand um, the, um, the, the, so we actually multiply resolving times, 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 uh, rank times elementary matrix and so forth take traces, you will quickly find yourself wanting to compute individual entries of, of the resolvent matrix. Um, and so um, the reason why this is true is because of, um, of eigenvector delocalization. Okay, so this is something that, that, uh, that uh, was talked about a lot in earlier lectures. Let me not say too much about it, but uh, just the, um, this resolvent can be split up using this, the SVD uh, in terms of spectral field in terms of eigenvectors. All the eigenvectors turn out to be very spread out in, in space, all, all the components are pretty small. Um, and if you, act, um, and this is where these technical assumptions about being sub-Gaussian come in, actually, in order to verify this, uh, this delocalization. Um, but you, you can compute, and it's done in the notes, um, the coefficients of its resolvents using the, uh, um, the eigenvector delocalization, and, and um, you end up with these bounds. Okay, so, so every term in the series is one of root n better than the previous term. So this is actually a very rapidly convergent series. So um, you can truncate it at any point. So for example, you can take, you can take um, the first uh, three terms and truncate, okay. much, as you, much as we do in the uh, central limit theorem case. Okay, and, and now the same miracle that works in the central limit theorem works here too. So this funny matrix M, M and tilde, uh, it's complicated, but it, it is independent of, 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 of CIJ. It only depends on all the other entries, not on the entry that we're perturbing. So once again, uh, so when you take, you take look at the expected still just transform. Um, once again, you can factor out the, um, the CIJ from uh, this expectation. You, you can just take it out in expectation because of independence. And this guy you can take out as a second moment and so forth. Okay? Um, and so once again, if you swap the CIJs with the CIJ primes, because the first two moments match, you know, it doesn't, you know, so these, these expressions are, are, are messy, but we don't care what they are, okay? Because um, all, all that matters is that we, when you change CI to CI, CI prime, they, uh, they don't change. So when, when we look at the, the difference, they all cancel each other out, and all that's left is the error term. So, um, yeah, so, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I should have said that this resolvent bound is only true if, ah, uh, uh, um, okay. Uh, this is true, but uh, yeah, there's, there's actually a, uh, uh, there's a better bound involving factors of, of n eta. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah. Okay, um, I'm not gonna, okay, so um, the bound is a little bit more complicated than this. Uh, it, it involves eta. Um, the, the, the further eta, the larger eta is, the better the bound gets. Uh, let me, it's, it's written up in the notes. I'm not gonna recall exactly what, what it is right now. But um, uh, yeah, so, so this error also has, has some, uh, some extra factor here uh, involved too. So, um, okay, okay. So when 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 you swap uh, when you're swapping each term, um, I think if, if if you if you do all the analysis, it ends up being one over n to the three halves minus epsilon. Okay, and this is extra term, uh, one over n eta, uh, coming from when you if you carefully try to bound these things properly. Um, and as long as eta is big enough, in this case bigger than n to the minus one half, um, this will be less than, than one over uh, one over n squared. So, um, yeah, so it, I mean, it, it's, it's slightly more complicated, but it's really the same uh, uh, method as, as was used in central limit theorem. Uh, and as long as you have two matching moments, you can get down to n minus one half. If you have more matching moments, you can do, a, you can take the, the, the expansion further and, and, uh, um, and you, you, uh, you, 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 um, you can take um, eta um, closer to, to the real axis. Uh, and so you, you get closer and closer to, to, to the micro scale. Um, and in particular, as I said, if you, if you take four, moment, uh, four matching moments, um, 
you get, uh, you get universality even, even below, even a little bit below the, um, the micro scale. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so basically, uh, to, to the summary is that the expected still to transform uh, at any given point obeys a full moment theorem. Um, even up on a micro scale, so up, up to two. The scale, one over n, the scale of, of, the, of the eigenary spacing. Um, actually, at the edge, I think it's a, better, a little bit better at the edge of the spectrum, because really, at, at, at the edge, the eigenvalues are spaced further apart. Um, so things are slightly better at the edge, but let me, not, not, let me just talk about the bulk, the simplicity. Okay, so, so what we've just proven is, is that this statistic has a full moment theorem, which means that if, if you change the matrix, as long as you keep the full moment the same, um, the limiting statistic doesn't change. Okay, so it turns out that you can, this argument is quite general. So here I just took a simple expectation of the surface transform. You can also take uh, correlations. Uh, you can take uh, the Stokes transform at two different two different spectral parameters, z1 and z2, and take take a take a, a joint moment of that, and you can take higher moments, um, and 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 you have similar theorems, um, and because of that, um, you can use some abstract nonsense, uh, and you, you, can, you can also show that 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 uh, k point correlation functions okay, that that. Uh, Okay, so um, I won't quite define what these things are, but but uh, but every random matrix uh, has a spectrum, and the spectrum has, has a, some is a random point process, and the point process comes with with certain um, uh, with certain correlation functions, which you have to rescale in a certain way. As discussed a little bit in, in Urch's lectures, uh, but if you if you rescale things properly, um, the, the correlation functions also have a full moment theorem up to the macroscopic scale um, in, in in the weak topology. You, you have to integrate. Um, the the, uh, the collision functions against some test function, um, but uh, but but um, and also the individual eigenvalues too. Like if, if you take individual eigenvalues of your your random matrix uh, and you take you take some some nice test function of individual uh, random uh, let's, let's let's say a finite number of, of these of these eigenvalues. Um, also, um, uh, there's there's a similar argument that shows that that uh, any function of a certain number of Say a bounded number of eigenvalues of your random matrix also obeys a full moment theorem up to a macroscopic scale. Okay, so um, so because of this, you can already get a, a lot of uni universality results. So let's sort of draw a picture. Okay, so this set here is supposed to do another set of a set of all big ensembles. Okay, so uh, let's say real, uh, let's say real vacuum ensembles just for, for the sake of discussion. Okay, so for example, GOE would be one point in this ensemble. There's also a Bernoulli ensemble, okay, and many other ensembles like this. Okay, so so every time you, you pick some random variables um, for your entries, you get a, 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 a vacuum ensemble. Okay, so it's a, it's a reasonably big class of ensembles, and we want to prove the universality results that that, that given any two. Um, um, ensembles in, 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 the, in the space, they have the same statistics asymptotically, um, which is great because for GOE, we can actually compute everything. And we, we know pretty much every statistic uh, uh, of GOE, at least in principle. Uh, and so once you have universality, then, um, and you can compute things for GOE, then you can compute things for everybody else as well. So what these four moment theorems do is that they, they sort of foliate this space. Okay, so I'm drawing these, these, these sort of contour, uh, these level set lines. So so these are these are lines of of, of, um, of ensembles with four matching moments. Okay, so so any two ensembles on the same curve, on the same on the same it's more like a hypersurface on, 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 on the same surface with the same four matching moments. See, um, there's there's basically. Uh, yeah, so the first two moments are already fixed. So assuming IID. Um, so there's really only two numbers uh, that are remaining. So, so um, this, is, this is a two-parameter family of, 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 sort of, um, of co-dimension two um, surfaces here. Okay, so, 
for every choice of third moment and fourth moment, you get some surface, and then so there's two parameter parameter surfaces fill out this, this big sort of infinite dimensional space here. Okay. So what these four moment theorems do is that they give universality, but, but, but only, only along this direction, only along this foliation. So for example, um, so for example, um, any, mat any matrix ensemble which, which has the same four moments as GOE will have the same spectral statistics as asymptotically as GOE. Okay, so that, that's what you can get purely from the um, four moment theorem, from this limited extreme strategy. So uh, unfortunately, for example, it doesn't uh, give you Bernoulli, because Bernoulli and GOE, uh, they only match the third to third order. They have different fourth moments. So the four moment theorem does not directly tell you that Bernoulli matrices and GOE have the same um, have the same uh, statistics. But, um, okay, so in order to, to get uh, more complete universality results, you need to um, combine the four moment theorem with, with other universality methods. So, um, right, so what people have been doing um, so independently of this is, is that they, they have found other classes of Wigner matrices which are known to be universal. So um, the, the, the first classes of this type was, was, was gauss dubois matrices. Okay, so these are matrices where the entries are not Gaussian, but they're the sum of a Gaussian and something independent of a Gaussian. So they have a Gaussian component. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so this, these are some matrices which are, can be split up as, as some multiple of a, of a GOE matrix okay, and, some, and then a multiple of some other matrix. Okay, uh, for some theta between 0 and 1. Okay, we'll go T. Okay, so there was initially work, you know, so, um, okay, so if you place GOE or GUE, right, so, okay, uh, so let me uh, blur the distinction between GOE. So if, if you place GOE or GUE, it's a little bit simpler. Uh, there was this early work of Johansson, who was able to analyze the spectrum of, of, um, of gauss divisible matrices in the GUE setting, um, and uh, he was able to show that, at least at level of correlation functions, that there was universality in this class that everybody in this, in this, in this uh, class has the same asymptotic statistics as, as GUE. Um, so um, the, th the thing about gauss divisible matrices is that these matrices do not have to have the same fourth moment uh, or third moment as, as your GUE matrix. So this, this class is somewhat transverse to the foliation that the formal moment theorem gives you. But you can combine this, this, um, this result with the um, formal moment theorem. And so now everybody Okay. And so you can, you, can, you can combine the two universal results to, to get a better universal result. Like any, any matrix which is not Gauss divisible but matches moments with um, a matrix which is Gauss divisible will also have the same asymptotic statistics as GOE because you use the four moment theorem to get from your original matrix to a Gauss divisible matrix, and then you use your Hansen's result to get from the Gauss divisible matrix to, to GOE. So because this, your Hansen's result is in some sense transverse to, to uh, the four moment theorem, uh, you can combine the two to get a better result. Um, and so this works reasonably well. Um, unfortunately, it still doesn't, it uh, turns out that, that uh, the Bernoulli ensemble is, is not uh, equivalent uh, to any Gaussian uh, divisible ensemble. So, so this result actually covers almost everything ex except the Bernoulli ensemble, actually. Uh, but over time, people have expanded so that they, they have gotten um, better results than Johansson. Um, so, you know, so for example, using uh, these methods of local relaxation flow, of, uh, of uh, Erdős, Schlein, and Yao, um, you, can, uh, you can extend these sort of universality class of, of matrices to matrices that are not just uh, gas divisible with a fixed uh, T, but uh, okay, yeah, so thanks to also later work of Erdős, Yao, and Yun, uh, we also have universality for certain, well, okay, there's actually many other authors involved here. Um, it depends on exactly what statistic you are measuring. So there's the still just transform, there's correlation functions, there's also energy average correlation functions, and there's a technical distinction there. But, um, but to oversimplify, um, well, we now have universality for, for Gauss divisible ensembles uh, with, uh, but you only need a very tiny fraction, a, a very small amount, amount of, of, of the Gaussian part. So, so T can be as small as n to the minus one plus epsilon. So just a little bit of, of, of Gaussianness in your um, in your ensemble is actually good enough to get universality, because of the rapid mixing properties of, of Dyson Brownian motion, basically. Uh, but that, that's uh, well, okay. So that's that's uh, you, you can see uh, uh, that's uh, uh, you can 
see that covered in the Erdős's lectures. So that, that, that expands the class of class divisible matrices. Um, still doesn't quite cover Bernoulli matrices. Um, Bernoulli matrices don't have any Gaussian component whatsoever. But, but now, um, um, okay, but it gets so close. It gets so close to Bernoulli that, that, that you can now find matrices in this class that are sort of, um, that match, that almost match all four moments with Bernoulli. Um, they don't completely match all four moments. Uh, no one's almost does. But they, they, they get so close that uh, you, you can use a slight perturbation of um, the four moment theorem to get from Bernoulli to something in, in this much larger class. And, um, and so by combining, uh, okay, so this is, this is what uh, was called the perturbative step in, uh, in Erdős's uh, three step uh, uh, strategy. Um, so, so nowadays you only need a little bit of the four moment theorem. Um, and because now all, all these heat flow methods do most of the heavy lifting. Uh, to get universality for, for the, um, 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 at least for certain statistics, like, like uh, say, energy average correlation or something. Um, but there are other settings in which uh, you still need, um, this, uh, um, in, in which the best universality results still rely mostly on the formal moment theorem. Uh, for example, if you don't work with Hermitian matrices, but you work with non-Hermitian matrices, IID matrices, like we did in, in, the, in the earlier lectures, and you're interested in uh, local statistics of eigenvalues of, of IID matrices. Um, so not, not just the circular law, which gives you the bulk distribution, but, but microscale laws. Um, we don't currently have an analog of this sort of Gauss divisible theory for, um, for the, in the non hermitian case, uh, basically because the, the analog of Dyson Brownian motion is much worse in, in the non hermitian case. In those eigenvectors, it was, it was eigenvalues, and we, uh, and, and we don't understand it very well. Um, so we don't have this, this transverse class. And so uh, currently, actually, for IID matrices, the, the best local universality results still come purely from the four moment theorem. Um, you need to match four moments with a, um, an existing class like Gaussian, like, uh, Gaussian matrices um, in order to, to, to understand the asymptotics. Uh, but maybe in the future that will be combinable with some other um, transverse universality result to, to, to get a, um, a larger class of universality. Um, also, if you're interested, um, yeah, so. Um, if, if, if you want to understand eigenvalue gaps, gaps between adjacent eigenvalues, then, then all these, uh, th then uh, this, uh, this theory of Gaussian divisible matrices and so forth um, works very well, and you, we have universality for the entire class. Um, if you're interested just in the distribution of a single eigenvalue, so a single eigenvalue, it's believed that it obeys a central limit theorem. Right? There's, there's eigenvalue rigidity, it, it, it hovers around a, a classical value, but it should do so in, in a Gaussian way. Um, and that uh, we only know, so th that's known to be true for, for Gaussian matrices. And because of the four moment theorem, it's also known to be true for things that match the Gaussian matrix. But um, unfortunately, um, it's actually believed to be false uh, that, that, uh, that once you move away, once you change the fourth moment, the, the act, or what should happen is that uh, it should still be Gaussian, but, but the mean should shift. It, it, there should, there's actually, there, there should be some, some um, noticeable uh, influence of, of the fourth moment on, on the distribution of a single eigenvalue. Um, you don't see it with gaps because uh, the, the shift cancels itself out. And you also don't see it with the correlation functions because it, there's also an averaging effect. Uh, but for individual eigenvalues, uh, so, sometimes actually the fourth moment is necessary. Um, so uh, sometimes, in, in some cases, the fourth moment is actually the correct universality class. But in other cases, there are some transverse universalities that you can use to, to, to go further. Okay, I am out over time, so thank you very much. Um, possibly, okay. So um, there is a variant, I, I didn't mention this because I of time. There is a variant of an exchange strategy where you don't exchange um, the entries one by one sequentially. Um, but, you, but you do so randomly. Um, so uh, what you do actually, you put sort of a, a Poisson clock on, on um, that, that sort of each, each entry is just, um, has a continuous time parameter from zero to one, and as a random time from zero to one, each entry just flips. But it doesn't work in any order. Um, so this, this, this is a variant introduced by my nose and yin. Um, and it does have uh, some better slightly better properties than, uh, than sort of the classical um, matching um, in that it does introduce a certain uh, averaging um, ac across all the entries. So rather than you know, as a single entry, you, you, you do them all at once. Um, and so in the case, in this context of matrices, um, it means that you don't necessarily need to understand each individual uh, component of a Green's function, but just sort of the, an, an average uh, or trace 
of, of, of the bridge plane. And that often has better estimates. Um, so it, yeah, it, it could be, uh, maybe it's, this is already uh, maybe uh, uh, done in, in, in uh, uh, some of these papers. So, so um, yeah, so, so perhaps in some of the papers involving ge uh, generalized Wigner matrices, maybe uh, you could take advantage of that, and, and you could maybe, uh, uh, um, yeah, in particular, um, um, allow variance to be traded among uh, some of the entries. Yeah, that is certainly one possible variant. Uh, no, um, it just comes from having enough moments. Um, so, um, yeah, if, if you had five matching moments, you get even smaller, and so forth. Um, that uh, at, at least for some statistics, okay. So, so for, for 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 the simplest statistics I mentioned, they're still just transform. Uh, you, uh, 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 yeah, it, it just comes out of, of, of the calculations. You 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 because the the, the um, when you do four moments, the, the, the error terms of size n to minus five, five halves, and there's, there's like there's like a a one by root n amount of room, because n to minus five halves is sort of uh, root n better than what you need for n squared. And so yeah, because of that, you, you can go a little bit below the natural scale. Um, in, in the, in, if you work it out in this case, so n to minus one twelfth over, over, over the natural scale. Um, although if you work, the more and more complicated expressions that, that you, you play with, I, th I think the, the, um, the gain you get gets less and less. Um, so um, yeah, so. Um, so uh, unfortunately, at the end of the day, even if you had like 100 matching moments, um, if you're interested in, in say, eigenvalue gaps, I think you, you can get even just a, there's, there is some, some power saving. I think you can get n to the minus one minus a little bit, but, but not very much. Um, the, the, the gain doesn't go to infinity as you increase the number of moments. Um, I think it's always like, like it's of the order of like something like a 12. 